Queens of the Plains, Martin and Annette Steinberg. Annette says she and her husband sold the piano to the defendant, and a flaky woman backed out at the last minute. They turned down two other offers, which they lost out on, and had to pay for the piano to be moved because they were selling their house. The defendant owes them 625 bucks for moving fees and the remaining balance on the sale. This is the defendant, Jessalyn. She says she gave the plaintiffs a $100 deposit on the piano to hold while she did some research on moving it and fixing it up. Turns out it wasn't worth it. She forfeited her deposit of $100 and was then harassed by the plaintiffs about moving the thing. She doesn't owe them all this money and knows the judge is going to agree. She's accused of changing her tune. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff sold their piano to the defendant who backed out, she flaked out, and now the plaintiffs are out a whole lot of money. But the defendant says she was happy to forfeit the $100 deposit, but that's it. It's the case of you got no heart and soul. Thank you, Doug. You're welcome, ma'am. Mr. and Mrs. Steinberg. Yes. You had a an old piano. Yes. Should I call it an antique? It is. It's almost 50 years old. Almost 50 years old. I okay, that makes me an antique, it. too. Well into the antique years. All right. 56-inch um, crack hour piano. Let's see. I know we have a picture of it. Let's get that up. I have a picture, if you like. I have it right here. Good. That's it, right? That's it. How long had you had it? Uh, I've had it for almost 40 years. I, I bought it for my uh, daughter when she was eight, and she's now 54. Okay. All right, so did you put it yourself on Craigslist? We put it on Craigslist together, yes. Okay, and uh, you were asking how much for it? We were asking $250. We thought we would sell it quickly because we were leaving for Florida, and when we returned, we were selling the house and downsizing to a smaller location and had In no New York, room. or were you also moving to Florida? We, like we, everyone else. No, we no. go to Florida for five months every year. Good for you. Um, so I presume that's during the winter, right? We go for the winter. We okay. were leaving on November 27th. So in you the wanted her to pick up, part of the deal was that she would pick it up by the 26th of November. Okay. So tell me about did you guys have anything in writing or everything was verbal? No, uh, she came with her then boyfriend, and she said she loved it, and she had her then boyfriend with her, and he examined the inside of the piano. He said it Yes, I know, and then they decided they'd buy it for 250 They said they and would buy it. you left a, a $100 deposit. Voluntarily. We, they could have left less. We would have accepted anything. Okay, and the reason you left a deposit? I was asked to because there were apparently other um, interested buyers. Okay. So in order to hold it, I needed to leave a deposit. Okay. They did say I could leave 50, but I had 100 on me, so we just gave the $100. Yeah, never do that. I know. Always now leave I the know. minimum, always yes. pay the minimum deposit. Any chance you get, always pay the minimum deposit because problems happen. Yes. All right, and then there's, you know, don't pay in full before a job is started. Don't do any of those things. Mm -hmm. ah, I'm too busy. Let me just pay in full. Don't do that. Yes. All right, um, we have a name for people who do that. We call them litigants. Yes. Okay. Here I am. You leave 100, mm -hmm. and According to you, there were strings attached to the purchase? Um, so what I needed to do was make sure, one, it would fit through the doorway of the apartment. Yeah, before you buy it. Before I actually Right, but you buy have, it. were buying it. At well, that I left a deposit. To me, a deposit is, yes, I'm interested, but I still have things I need to figure out. I told them I would need did to Did you figure... verbalize any of this to them, that you had things you need to figure out you weren't sure? Or yes, did you say, had... wait, there's two other people interested? Here's 100 bucks. Um, Yes, kind of both, which, you know, um, I needed to make sure, one, we can get it moved, one, that it would fit into the apartment, um, and then I wanted to go to a local uh, piano shop and see how much it would be to fix it up. Um, after doing some research, um, I realized that, one, it wasn't going to fit through the door, two, well, just okay, to move it. Well, okay, stop a second, because I have emails that I've seen that you sent mm -hmm. them asking the width of the door, mm -hmm. and you saying... Let me not put words in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Perfect. 
um, or something like that. Now I just have to find out how much it'll cost to move. Yes. And there was the rub. That was the real rub, right? It'll and fit then, through the door. Yes. The problem is that you'd have to pay a lot to move it. How mm -hmm. much what you were getting quotes so like what? Getting quotes around four to six hundred, depending. Right. Um, and after also bringing it to the pictures and what we knew about it to the piano shop, they said it was going to cost a lot of money to fix, which I did intend to want to fix it to play it eventually. Um, so after just... You change your mind. I changed my mind. And so do you, how do you let them know? Because the emails they have been getting were like, don't worry, I'll get it out yes. of there before your vacation. That was the plan. And right. then as more time went on and I realized, which this is all within like five or six days, I ended yeah. up calling Mr. Steinberg and letting him know I would no longer be taking the piano. And then you have the hubris to ask for your $100 back. Well, I do have something that says refundable deposit. What do you right have? Wait, here. what do you have that says refundable deposit? The receipt from them? Yes. Oh. Thank you. She's misreading that. What does, what's it supposed to say? It's a receipt that we received a hundred dollars from her. R E F D. R E S D. No. R E C D. R E C D. No. R E C D. He Re doesn't -E write well. R E C D. That's debatable. That's debatable. R -E -C -D. Uh, I've never seen refundable no. spelled R E F D. I. Have seen people abbreviate rec received with mm -hmm. R E C D. It looks like an F. No, it's you not. know. Oh wait, no, don't tell me it doesn't look like an F. Go look at that and tell me it doesn't look like. He an doesn't F. write clearly. Well, he doesn't write clearly. I should have written it. It's a C. C. Do you tell me that doesn't look like an F? It does. Okay, just admit it. That's all I'm asking for a little clarity. But anyway, what happens is you ask for your hundred. I take back the hubris part. Yeah. Uh, because maybe you, you know, um, felt that that meant refundable. But in any event, you ask for the hundred dollars back, and what happens? They said absolutely not. Um, I wanted to just let this go and say, okay. Well, no, you didn't. You filed a small claims case against well, him. I actually didn't. It was my ex at the time who did but it. It was in your name. I know. So um, you had to have gone to the courthouse and signed stuff for it to be in your name. I a, never, a man can't walk in and file a lawsuit under Jessalyn. I never went to court for anything. Well, then he brought you the paperwork and you signed it. I actually didn't. So. Well, then what did he do? Forge it with your permission? Not with my permission. I wanted to let this I'm go. I'm sorry. Stop. Are you suggesting that your ex-boyfriend behind your back, filed a lawsuit in your name that you didn't know anything about. Yes. You don't really mean that, do you? Yes, I, do, I know you actually. said that to them, but I didn't think, I thought you were just saying that to them no, to be nice and try to get true. the whole No, it's true. He was very angry about this. And he um, said, and he didn't tell you, I'm going to court, I'm going to file a small claims case? He made a joke about it. I didn't think he was serious. Um, again, the hundred... So what did he do? Did he forge your name on it? Yeah. So if the, if the plaintiff gave the $100 deposit, um, are the plaintiffs l limited for just keeping the hundred dollars, or can they sue for the rest of the money? Um, I don't know the whole story. <laughs> what do you say? What do you think? I don't know. I mean, the deposit is there so that, like, at least there's a little bit of money going towards. So, is the deposit supposedly enough? You think? I don't know. It depends on the person. Is the deposit enough? No, the deposit is there to secure that the tra that the transaction is going to happen. So the plaintiff, so the uh, plaintiff could be on. Or the, excuse me, the defendant could be yes. on, for everything. Yes, absolutely. Wow, I wasn't even able to get the words out and you finished my sentence. Good job, going inside the courtroom. You received notice that you were being sued for the yes. $100. And what we, happened with that case? We countersued and she did, neither of us went to court. So it got dismissed. And it was dismissed. Why didn't anybody go to court? We were in Florida. We couldn't go to court. The court was in Nassau County. Did, okay, so had you received the notice or no? We received the notice, yes. but I wrote for, to the judge for an adjournment, and they it could, and I asked for an and adjournment. And you got one. Yeah. Well, you did, didn't get I one. didn't get the adjournment. Okay. All right, I, so you come back from Florida, because now it's May, and May. it's hot. <laughs> it's hot in Florida in May. Yes. And then <laughs> you uh, filed this claim against her, because yes. you not only want her to buy the darn piano, you also want her, more importantly for you, to move the darn piano. Correct. Okay. 
because that's the real value in selling the piano, is getting it out of your house. That's why we priced it low. We may end up donating it to a nursing home and pay for the movement. So if we don't sell it. You're suing her for $150 plus moving costs of $475. Correct. So what happens with reselling it? We didn't have any buyers. We had inquiries. Okay. And we told so them did we you, have when she bailed in November, did you put it back on the market when you we came home? We had no time. She came and on the 24th of November. No, I know. Once you came home in May, did you put it back on the market? Yes. Okay. And it hasn't sold? No, not yet. Okay, but your house hasn't sold either, right? No, You're but we had some offers that are kind of low, and we're looking to so get a why little can't, more. So why shouldn't your measure of damages, you want your measure of damages to be the entire sale, to force her to, into the sale, and uh, moving costs. Yes. Right, I know, I know what you want. <laughs> um, but why shouldn't your measure of damages be, hey, this sale didn't work, you kept her $100, Sell it to someone else. We're going to try. And I said to her, we're going to try and sell it to someone else. But in the meanwhile, she was suing us, so we decided to go to court. <laughs> we were angry because she wanted her $100 back, which we felt she was not entitled to. I know. She right? caused us Bad a idea problem. to file the case, because she filing the case meant that, uh, you know, then you've poked the bear. I will say, though, if I could, if I can, again, I just don't feel that it is my responsibility at this point to get the piano out of their home. I am sorry that the sale... Well, I mean, do you understand the position that they're taking? Their position is, Judge, we had this sold. Um, she agreed to buy it. You, do you understand? I do understand. Like, they're not I, completely I nuts. Right? Not completely. No, okay. And <laughs> you guys understand what she's saying, right? Like, you're still in a position where your damages are just your lost time, really. You could still sell it. You still got it. It's still there. But I just feel, look, I just feel that because it is not as though she bailed and then you had movers coming the next day and you were forced to pay those movers, um, it's not that kind of situation. You still haven't even sold the house. You can still sell that piano. And I find that you are not entitled to your $100 back. Um, and you're entitled to keep the $100. But I'm not going to force her to pay you $625. Uh, I think that the $100 um, mitigates your damages. You're now $100 richer and you're in the same position. Go ahead and just sell the piano and or Give it away for free. Give it, give it to an organization that'll come pick it up. Take the tax right off, and you won't be any worse off or out anything else. Um, because under these circumstances, in this case, you didn't end up having to pay movers because you just don't want to at some future date. You don't want to be out that money a month from now, six months from now, a year from now. Well, sell the piano. That's the other alternative because you have it to sell. Verdict in this case. For the plaintiff and the amount of the hundred that they already have that I declare that they get to keep, okay? And you had already ditched your counterclaim because you knew it made you look bad. All right. You don't even get 150. So in this case, both parties walk out just the way they walked into court. You still have the piano, and you're not going to get the money that she you, you wanted from her, the $600. What do you feel? We're disappointed because we didn't even get the 150. You got 100. Yes, but yes, the piano was... So you keep that. You was, keep that. But the piano was to be sold for 250 Yes, I know, but you, it, the judge it, says you can't get that. Yeah. Okay? That's the, really, that's what it is. That's, okay. Well, sorry about that. Then we'll just have to cope with the situation. Well, you'll have to hazardous. sell the piano right now. Start and sell it again. Will you Try. Do that? You'll do yes. your best. Okay. Yes. Very yes. good. I'm sorry you lost, but that's the way it is. Thank okay. You. All right. Jessalyn is on her way out of the courtroom now. Your suggestion really is what you ended up doing. Yes. Okay. So. What were you going to do with it? I was taking piano lessons, and I wanted to just kind of make it like a furniture piece and okay. restore it back to... That's quite like a challenge, you know, so, you know, a yeah. piano like that. Yes. Well, good luck. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank okay. You. That brings this case to a close. Harvey, what do you think? I mean, the problem here, Doug, is that the plaintiffs have a duty to mitigate, which is to minimize their damages, which means they have to try to sell the piano to somebody else. They just didn't do it.